Cool, awesome. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> All right. Uh, somebody asked me, hey, did you repurpose the slides too? Because the talk is about repurposing content, but there's not too much traffic. So I'm Syed Balki. I'm the founder of uh, WP Beginner, Optin Monster, WP Forms, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I'm here to talk about a strategy that not very many people talk about, um, and that is repurposing. The problem is everybody's all focused on creating content. But what really happens is you create content once, you share it usually once, and then you let it sit to die in your blog's archives. Because how many of you go on a personal blog, like if you go to SyedBalki.com and say, let me see what Syed wrote in 2015. Really? You go, you go to one, two, three, four, five, six. Most people don't do that, right? So the idea behind is instead of coming up with new ideas, why don't you take the ones that are really, really working and repurpose them to get you more traffic, more sales, more subscribers, or whatever your goal is. So I'm going to share with you a process that we use and show you some of the successes that we have had with the process. Uh, number one, you have to identify the right articles. Not every article is repurposable. For example, WordPress 4.8 came out. Now, three weeks from now, I can't repurpose that because it already came out. Uh, but if I have an article about speeding up WordPress, I can most definitely do that. So go in a tool called Google Analytics, and you want to look at the most popular landing pages on your website. You can start with the top 10. If you have a larger you know, team, you can go in the top 20, top 50. Pick the ones that are getting a lot of traffic that needs updating, and then you start the repurposing. The one thing that worked really, really well for us was changing the content format, it's taking the blog posts and turning them into other mediums, such as video. So I also have a website called List25. It's a top 25 list sites. You guys should check it out. It started out as a simple blog in, in 2011. In 2012, I decided to convert our blog content into videos. Nothing special. One of the guys in my team literally read the article with the images being the slideshow. And that's pretty much what we still do. And we have 2.2 million subscribers on YouTube um, with over half a billion video views, all by taking our blog post and just having somebody read it with a, with a slideshow. People weren't doing it. Now, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, followed by the first largest, Google. And it's also owned by the first largest. So this strategy works so well for us. I said, why don't we do it on WP Beginner? So we started doing it. We have now over 600 videos on, on WP Beginner's YouTube, and we just passed 60,000 subscribers and have over 8 million video views, all by just taking the tutorials that we have and converting them into screencasts or you know, just somebody reading out the list. And it works really, really well, because some people choose to you know, consume the content in video. So if you're not doing it already, start leveraging YouTube now. Repurpose your existing blog posts into YouTube videos. But it doesn't have to be you know, just YouTube videos. There are times when we see an article that's doing really, really well that may have been written like a year ago or even two years ago. We go back and take a look at it. Can we make it better? Can we add something to it? And infographics work really, really well. An example of it is what the heck is a CDN? How to install CDN was one of our most popular articles on WP Beginner. But one of the questions that kept coming up in the comments was, what is a CDN? What does it do? So we decided to create a different piece of article from that existing article and add an infographic to it, and then we can link it all across. Same thing with WordPress user role management. We talk about you know, different user roles, and we said, why don't we just combine all of them and have an uh, infographic comparison chart? So you can create infographics on top of your blog post, like go back, see if it's, something's working really well, add to it. Uh, there's a really cool tool called PictoChart. You can use it, drag, drop, make infographics, but, and you can sometimes get lucky even Fiverr. If not, just use vectors from Shutterstock or Photoshop, and you can go from there. SlideShare is another one that I used to use. I don't use it anymore because the conversion opportunities aren't as much there. But you can take your existing blog post and convert them into slides. There have been times when I did that and was featured on the home page for so many days. I got a lot of followers on SlideShare, but not as much conversions. But this just brings visibility. If you're just starting out, taking one blog post and then converting them in different mediums let that one blog post work that much harder for you. Create podcasts. Right? Podcasting is a hot thing. Uh, and my friend uh, Darren Rouse, who runs ProBlogger, and I were chatting, I think a few years ago, maybe two years ago, hey, podcasting is kind of growing. How should we go about tackling it? So again, you can repurpose your content. So Darren decided to launch his podcast with, um, with this 31 days to build a better blog course. 
So which started out as a blog post series uh, in 2009 or 2010, actually, where he just decided to do a 31 days to build a better blog challenge. It was 31 days of tips, tips after tips after tips, which he then turned it into an ebook and sold it. Um, and then he used it you know, several years later to launch his podcast, which now has millions of downloads. And I imagine he will probably turn this into a course as well, because the membership sites and courses are also taking, um, taking peak. So again, repurposing content. Another good way is to create content upgrades and eBooks out of it. Everybody's familiar with eBooks. So if you have an article that's doing really, really well, you can turn that into an eBook and then have people download it in exchange for an email address. This is how you grow your email list. Content upgrades work slightly different. So you have a blog post that might be talking about uh, how, like one of them on my website is how I increase you know, my productivity by adding five hours to my day. And all I did was you know, started blocking all the different tasks that I do and batching them so I can work in focus batches. A perfect upgrade for this was, hey, you can download a worksheet, which was just this Excel file uh, in exchange for an email address. That acts as a content upgrade. We also have a list of 30 content upgrade ideas. And again, you see how it says updated. The reason why it says updated is because we went back and added a PDF checklist of things that you can do to create a successful content upgrade. And these things work really, really well. Just to show you some numbers, is that a general like, you know, pop-up or thing on our website is converting at 1% versus content upgrades, because they they're so relevant, they're always converting in double digits, like 30 40% or even higher. So adding this, just repurposing content, goes a long way. You can also use your most popular blog posts and turn them into engagement campaigns for your email list. And we do this quite often. So I don't know exactly how many days after you get this email, but you will if you subscribe to WP Beginner. Is your WordPress site secure? And in there, we're going to recommend our popular guide on the ultimate WordPress security guide. And it will recommend you know, um, web application firewalls like Securi and several other solutions um, in there. But you can repurpose your blog posts, turn them into email automation campaigns. You can also turn them into courses and membership sites. I gave an example of what Darren could do, but you can see like, other people in their industry that are doing it. Yoast, for example, have you know, several new trainings coming out, basic SEO training, but Yoast has been blogging about SEO for years. He's covered a lot of this content now, repackaging it, updating it, making it better, explaining it better, and turning it into training courses. Michael Hyatt did it with his best year ever. Um, and then you know, his Get It Published courses, John Lee Dumas does it, Pat Flynn, everybody that you know is doing this. Um, and if you're not, you should be doing it. Content audit. This is something that we do routinely. Every six months we sit down, we create a list of all the content that we're going to audit. We update it, we rewrite it, we merge it, or we republish it. One way or another, it's getting, it's getting updated. Essentially, here's an example. The ultimate guide to boost WordPress speed and performance. This article, we, we actually first wrote it in 2009, and then updated it in 2012, updated it in 2015, and updated it again in 2017. 25 most common WordPress errors. These are actually a compilation of 25 separate articles, just list, listed them. So it's a completely new article, and it's getting a lot of traffic, but it's, it's nothing new. Same thing with our WordPress SEO guide. We've talked about these tips separately so many times, not just combining them into these ultimate guides. And pretty soon, these are going to turn into ebooks as well. You can also create what I call collections or ultimate listicles. So we have written like you know, 15 different tutorials about WordPress menus, whether how to add icons or how to add this. And then we will come out with a showcase article that says 15 best tutorials to master WordPress navigation, or 15 best tutorials to you know, improve your Facebook traffic, and things like that. And all what it's doing is compiling the articles that we already have on our website and creating a new list, because lists tends to get shared a whole lot. And all what this is doing is people are coming to it, and then they're going to other pages on your website, because these articles don't really give everything away. So you, you're increasing page views. You're getting the user to buy in. You're, they're seeing so much value on your website, and they convert into subscribers. And the last thing is you got to reshare your content. Don't just share it once. Share it twice in a day, three times in a day. Share it the next day. Share it, share it two days after. Share it one week after. There are tools out there to help you do that. Bulk Buffer works really, really well with Buffer. There's a tool called Rewife Social. There's also CoSchedule that lets you do that. So don't just share your content once. Share it multiple times. Um, and then just keep testing, learning, improving. Thank you very much. I'm Saez Balki.